headline on the homepage of the Michael J. Fox Foundation's website today reads, Breaking News, Parkinson's Disease Biomarker Found. It sounds super exciting, but for those who've not been tracking the search for a Parkinson's biomarker, can you simply explain some of the key findings? First of all, this, I'm just going to say up front, this is the most important finding we've had to date in what has been almost a two-decade pursuit of something that helps us objectively identify and measure the course of Parkinson's disease. And so what was published last week was our ability now to detect in living people the pathology of alpha-synuclein protein that misfolds in Parkinson's disease. And so this is a significant and um, very catalyzing finding. Uh, can you take us sort of in behind the curtain when you shared the news with Michael, what was his reaction? Um, I knew that we were a couple weeks away from being able to present this data at an upcoming Fox Foundation board meeting, and I really just wanted to make sure that Michael got a chance to hear it first. So um, he was on a family vacation in California, and I, I flew out to visit with him. And, um, you know, I set up some time. I, Todd Scherer, the chief mission officer at the Fox Foundation and a, with the lead um, scientist for our team, he was joining us by Zoom. And so I, I kind of sat down with Michael and I said, Todd's gonna, gonna be with us in a minute. Um, I just need you to know, he's gonna tell you all the science. Um, and, and Todd's a great science communicator. So it, was gonna, it wasn't that it would be impenetrable, but I said, but you just need to know, this is a breakthrough. And he just looked at me and, and then I hit like hit go on the Zoom. And um, Todd explained it all and was and Michael was nodding. He totally got it. Of course, we've been invested in biomarkers to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars over the last um, 15 to 18 years. And he knew exactly what the implications were. And he just he was choked up. Um, he was so proud and excited and felt like this is what we're here for. I mean, he just he, he immediately appreciated the full potential of this finding and but the the the, the um, cutest part was he picked up this, the computer screen picked up his laptop and brought it forward and leaned over and kissed Todd on the screen <laughs> and and it was just I I mean he just was really thrilled and has been giddy about the information ever since and as we should be this is this is this is big stuff so when the PPMI study began 13 years ago, what was the intention of the study going into it? PPMI, the idea was to study everything we could imagine, collect samples, bank them, and see if the data in PPMI by studying people and controls um, could tell us something about, give us the insights. But broadly, we made all the data available to researchers worldwide. And they, I mean, it's been downloaded something like 15 million times over the last 13 years. And it also stood as a ready cohort for validating biomarkers that we could see traction in, in small numbers. And so just in the last year, 1,100 samples, PPMI were all, um, uh, we were able to use the, the spinal fluid samples that went one sample for everybody who uh, we were able to use for validation. And um, that enabled us to validate this in a significant population. And here we are. So uh, you mentioned spinal fluid. This is because of spinal taps. These 1,100 people had what? I like to call taps? them lumbar punctures. <laughs> but, okay, lumbar punctures. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so they, but they had several of these over the years or just one or how, how does that work? Um, as a control, I've had fewer, but I think I've already had something like eight or nine, maybe 10 over the years. Wow. Yeah. And so this is all, it's not just the spinal fluid, which is extremely valuable. It's that it is attached to extremely well characterized individuals. So you know a lot, even though you don't know who they are individually, but the, the data package around all the samples are um, elaborate. And so um, not only in this finding can we detect this, uh, this bad alpha-synuclein um, and, and see that someone has Parkinson's, um, it actually shows up in people who have manifest symptoms of Parkinson's. But as I mentioned, there's a decent number of samples in PPMI that are from people who don't have manifest symptoms, but rather we know to be at higher risk for Parkinson's disease. So this is detecting um, 
the pathology of the disease before symptoms even start. Which is like awesome. Yeah. Well, this is no surprise, right? You know, we, nobody really believes that the day you decide to pick up the phone and try to see a doctor that the day before is when you got Parkinson's disease. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and as you know, you know, once you have PD and if you learn a little bit more about its broader symptom package and things, you start to realize, oh, wow, you know, I get diagnosed based on arrest tremor and rigidity, bradykinesia and, and, but but there are a lot of other things that are commonly present. And those often, the, some of the non-motor features are things that predate the classic symptoms, kind of the diagnose, di- diagnosing symptoms by, by decades. And so the biology has long been believed to be underway for quite some time before symptoms present and send someone to a doctor. Um, and now we have a tool that, that, that validates that. And is there any benefit uh, that you can see from this discovery for people who already are, you know, five, 10, 15 years into their Parkinson's uh, adventure? This has the best chance today to change the drug trials that people are waiting for outputs on. And that since, you know, we've had 18 new drugs approved in the last eight years, I think, but they're all things that are, by the way, important, and they're helping us better manage symptoms but we have a very robust pipeline of interventions that are trying to go after underlying disease pathology like alpha-synuclein. Um, it's not the only one. We are going after other targets like BLRT2, GBA, um, but almost every Parkinson's patient has misfolded alpha-synuclein in their brain at autopsy. Not all, but almost all. And so that means there's something going on with alpha-synuclein and having a tool that objectively measures it is really today that can really speed the results from these trials that are it that are teed up or underway right now it's not a futuristic thing they're moving right into these trials and that will make the biggest difference for people who've had parkinson's um, already and are looking for better treatments the care will be driven by the the um the uh proof of efficacy and relevance of new treatments. And this tool has now been a real game changer for what's possible in the short term.